Now let's look on the assembly of liquid liquid extraction unit. In this extraction unit, we have two uh, feed uh, vessels. Okay, one is called B1. Okay, the other one is called B2. All right. So this B1 and B2 is the graduated cylindrical vessel with a capacity of 50 liter. The streams that we're going to have in this equipment from B2, we're going to have an inlet stream. From B1, we're going to have also an inlet stream. But the inlet stream for B2 will be on the top of the column and the inlet for B1 is at the bottom of the column. Okay. Next, we also have a receiving vessels, which is labeled B3 and B4. Okay. So this B3 is called the raffinate vessel. Okay. And the stream is from the bottom of the column. You're going to collect some product, which is called raffinate here. Okay. And then we have a B4 where the streams come from the top of the column and you name this vessel as your uh, extract, okay, where you collect the extract. The unit also have uh, two pumps, P1 and P2. Okay, so this pump is the dosing pumps, okay which is operated at 0.022 kilowatt piston pump, okay? And this pump can handle up to 42 liter per hour capacity, okay? So the pump is needed to pump the feeds from the vessel B2 and B1 into the column. The unit also consists of pulsation dampers, which is labeled B5 and B6. Okay, so these uh, dampers are used to reduce the fluctuation of the feed flow rate. And then the last one is the column, which is called the rotating disturber in the column. Okay. So this rotating D stirrer in the column can control, you can control the speed of the stirrer up to 1000 RPM. There are few operating procedures need to be followed before or after the experiment finish. The first one is general startup procedures followed by general shutdown procedures. General startup procedures. You need to ensure that all valves are initially closed. Next, you need to ensure the feed vessel B1 is filled up with pure toluene solvent and the feed vessel B2 with acetone water solution. So recognize B1 is your solvent feed and B2 is your liquid feed. Next, you need to turn on the main switch at the control panel. Followed by open ventilation line valve HV18 HV19, HV20, HV21, HV11, HV13, HV2, HV24, and HV7, followed by HV22. Then, Switch on pump number two. So by switch on pump number two, we allow the acetone water solution, which is 
also called heavy face, to enter the column. And fill to the level of about 100 centimeter above the solvent inlet. When the acetone water solution reach the level of 100 cm from the solvent feed stream, we need to switch off pump number two. The next step is to switch on pump number one. So when we switch on pump number one, you allow the solvent to flow into the column. So this is the pure toluene, which is light phase, entering the column. We need to watch the interface level, which form between the light and the heavy phases. We need to maintain the interfaces level of 100 cm above the solvent inlet by adjusting the height of the overflow tube, which is the U-shaped tube. Once the liquid starts to overflow at the top of the column, we're going to switch off pump number one. After switch off pump number one, we need to switch on the stirrer at the control panel. So now the equipment is ready for the experiment. Now let's look on the general shutdown procedures. First, you need to switch off pump number one and pump number two. Switch off the stirrer by switch off the button of the stirrer at the control panel. Next is to open the valve number 12, valve number 14, and valve number 16. You open this valve to drain all the liquid from the equipment to the waste tank. Next is to switch on pump number 2 to wash the column until it is clean. Then you need to open valve number 16 to drain all the liquids from the column to waste tank. Next is to close the valve number 2, number 7, number 12, number 14, number 16, number 18, number 19, number 22, and number 24. Now you can turn off the main switch at the control panel. Experiment number one, extraction of acetone from water using toluene. The chemicals used in these experiments are acetone, which is the solute, water, which is diluent, and toluene is the solvent. In this experiment, there are two feed stream and two outlet stream from the column. The feed flow stream is called solvent, which is consists of toluene, which is also known as light phase. Another feed is called acetone water mixture, which is called heavy phase. So from the PFD, we can see that Vessel B1 will consist of our solvent, 
which is consists of toluene, which is also known as light phase. Because the solvent is light phase, therefore, we're going to feed the solvent at the bottom of the column. Another feed stream that we have is the feed for the solution. Okay. So we have B2, which is filled with acetone water mixture. And this acetone water mixture is also known as heavy phase. In this uh, acetone water mixture, we have acetone as the solute, water as the diluent. So we're going to feed the acetone water mixture, which is known as heavy phase, into the column from the top of the column. So the purpose of feeding the acetone water mixture or the heavy phase is to make sure that the heavy phase will flow downward. Where else the solvent, which is light phase or your toluene, will be fed into the column from the bottom. Because solvent or the toluene is light phase, toluene will flow upward. So what we're going to have in the process is to have the countercurrent flow between the heavy phase, which is flow downward, and the light phase will flow upward. The outlet flow or the outlet stream consists of the stream of extract and the stream for the raffinate. The extract is called toluene rich phase, where else raffinate is also called as water rich phase. The objective of this experiment is to operate a liquid-liquid extraction experiment using a rotating disc column. The next objective is to determine the height equivalent theoretical plates, which is HETP for the column. The following are the procedures for this experiment. Before you begin the experiment, you need to perform a general start-up procedures, which has been mentioned before. First, you need to start both palm P1 and P2. Allow the both liquids to flow into the collection vessel B3 and B4. The bottom product should contain of water-rich phase, which is called raffinate, and the top product contains toluene-rich phase, which is also called extract. So for B3, you're going to collect your raffinate, and for B4, you're going to collect your extract. Next, monitor the interface level. Monitor the interface level and maintain it about 100 cm above the solvent inlet. How to monitor the interface level? This is by adjusting the height of the overflow tube, which is the U-shaped tube above the equipment. Once both collection vessel B3 and B4 are filled with samples product, we can start collect the samples. You need to open valve number 17 to collect the sample of the raffinate and open valve HV15 to collect the sample of the extract. Remember to close the valve once the samples are taken. Start the stopwatch and continue to collect the product samples for every two minutes. You collect the samples for both raffinate and your extract 
until the refractive index become constant. Record the refractive index into table given to you in Appendix A. Next, you need to stop or switch off pump number one and pump number two. And now it's time to repeat the experiment using the speed of the stirrer given in the questions. After the experiment is done, you need to switch off the stirrer at the control panel. Open valve 12, 14 and 16 to drain all liquids from the equipment to waste tank. Switch on pump 2 to wash the column until it is clean and then switch off pump 2 again. Open valve 16 to drain all liquids from the column to waste tank. Next is to close the valve number 2 number 7, number 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 22, and 24. So the last step is to turn off the main switch at the control panel. Now, it's your turn to do the experiment. 